Garcia here checking in with you or tuning into this guy because I'm that guy. Coffee and cream, put it to use. What is up? So in today's particular video, I would like to speak on the negative aspects in regards to the sign of Aquarius. Now, the three areas I want to speak on in particular or expand upon is going to be how sometimes Aquarians are very headsy. Obviously, we have a very um, different approach to life, so being different versus being difficult. And obviously, the judgmental aspect in regards to general intellect, okay? Now, for those of you who may have seen previous videos, obviously, you've seen the Scorpio video. We are the sum of our charts. You want to see what your chart looks like, what favorable or strong positions you got going on, head on up to the description area, especially for those of you who don't feel anything, any sort of connection with your sun sign. If you open up and see your, your chart, you may find some really cool stuff as far as to why and where the elements were at and what was going on and the stars and so forth and so on. So nevertheless, anyhow, jumping into the headsy aspect of Aquarius. Now, it's just simply as though there's life, there's reality, there's the world around us, and then there's our mind. And our mind creates all sorts of beautiful or very ugly kind of things. Now, the problem with being so headsy is that it's almost as if I could be present here. However, our minds are somewhere else. I, we, we, really, we really don't know. It could be pondering a number of different things from um, how we could have did something better, or what we're going to work on, or what we're going to eat, or where we're going to go, or whatever the case may be. We're just in our heads, just locked in. And so what happens is, unfortunately, that comes across as very detached. That comes across as very cold or uncaring. Now, it isn't necessarily that we don't care, but it, it just, it kind of gives this resting bitch face kind of thing going on, and that's not necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say that's my... Aquarian energy, but I definitely feel that my Aquarian energy feeds that um, tendency to look very detached and cold and, um, you know, in my own world, which I love. I want to be in my own world because there's a number of different things that I'm working on. But when I am in a social environment, it's not as if I need to be the best friend of anybody, but nevertheless, it is something to be considerate of. Now, with the being different versus being difficult, it's just one of those things where sometimes we may have the propensity to just jump into being different just because. It doesn't really have any rhyme or rhythm behind it, it's just because maybe in our minds we just want to kind of experiment with something. Well, the problem with that is that that obviously transitions into being um, difficult because there's a time and place when obviously we can selectively choose these kind of things. but in the moment isn't necessarily the best thing that we need to be taking on who knows it's something that we actually have to step back and evaluate and then moving into the whole judgmental um, aspect of, of general intellect our minds are so geared towards moving things forward our minds are so geared towards what is going to better humanity and so therefore when people aren't doing anything to add to that kind of mission it tends to piss us off it, it kind of gets very aggravating and not not in a sense that we truly care from an emotional standpoint but more so like well great you're just adding to the fucking problem that I'm sitting here trying to fix and so um, it, it can merge into that area of being very judgmental of people that maybe we just haven't got the chance to know just yet maybe yeah I mean it's understandable that there are a great deal of people out here doing nothing with themselves but it, are they really doing nothing with themselves or what's going on? Maybe it's like a situational kind of thing. And so um, it, it's trying to hold back from just pushing that judgment to the forefront. Now, how do you deal with these kind of things? Obviously with being headsy, one of the practices that I in particular love to do is just lose my mind and come to my senses. You know, it's, it's one of those quotes I love by Ralph Infinite Water Smart. If you follow his channel, He's always saying it, and it's a quote that I just absolutely, it resonates very well with me. Lose your mind to come to your senses. I mean, like, and maybe you got that from another author or philosopher or something. I don't know. I Don't quote me on that one, all right? That's just who I first heard it from, but it just makes so much sense because at times, the best thing to do for someone who is so um, analytical, so like going through things, processes and whatnot in our heads, 
one of the best things is just kind of step back, go to nature, or, or just simply meditate. Just come to your senses. You know, one of the practices I love to do uh, when I feel that my mind is just going through too much, I can't just sit and meditate. That's not like how I typically meditate. One of the best things I try to do is tap into my senses. So I'll like close my eyes and maybe just kind of, you know, obviously I'm still seeing like I'm off in my head if we're in this, we're in this social environment, but you know, I'll listen and I'll see, you know, I'll try to identify three different things that I can hear, you know, and then I'll, you know, try to see if I can find three different things I can smell. And then maybe I'll open up my eyes and I'll try to locate, you know, maybe something I can appreciate out of the visual um, environment that I'm within. Between doing those three things, I'm able to re-engage myself in a way where I've now tapped into maybe that function that's very much subdued and, and kind of like put to the back because our minds are geared towards you know the intellectual side of life and it, it is very fun to us and so if we're engaging with other people it could be rather difficult to, to do that at that specific time and so when I bring myself to my senses and I tap into those things I'm able to kind of re-engage myself in a way where I can find maybe a person or two to interact with or I can just simply provide the occasional smile, like, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, all, I'm okay, yeah, I'm drinking my water, and I go off on my side, and the extroverts do what they do. And so that's one way, obviously, you can help out with being headsy. And obviously, the coming to your senses thing, I mean, that could be applied towards anywhere. I mean, maybe you're headsy and you're being really bitchy and really fucking grumpy for no reason, and you're like, damn, how do I knock out of this? Well, come to your senses brings you back to the moment and then that way you can re-engage with a clear mind. Hopefully that makes sense in a way. Now different being you know different versus difficult. Now this is it's 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 hard to battle against that because being different is going to be different. Or sorry, being different is going to be difficult because if it were easy everybody would do it and Obviously, most people aren't going to engage these kind of things. And so that difference is going to be difficult whether we choose it to be or not. And so it's once again re-engaging our minds, maybe coming to our senses and then reapplying ourselves and then seeing, okay, do I necessarily have to do it this way? Does it have to be, you know, this kind of way? Can we cut this corner? Can we extend this out? Or whatever the case may be, you're able to, you know, play a more critical off the cuff role versus so strategic and always in your head like the strategic and all your in your head it's just gonna come naturally and so now it's like okay well how do I engage the senses to understand okay the situation at hand if I were to engage myself in a different way could I decrease the the possibility the potential of, of a difficult event occurring or something extending and prolonging what I don't want in the first place now I'm able to engage others and, and like tap into their psyche in a way to make them kind of reactionary to what I'm projecting out. But if, what if what I'm projecting out is, I don't give a fuck, this is my way or the highway, like there's going to be some people who, even if you make a lot of sense, they're not going to hear it. And so the only way, once again, you tap into your senses, that way you're able to tap into other people. And at the minimum, if you listen and, and give way to people, it can kind of help you out with that um, that difference. Because your difference is coming from, hope, I would hope, you know, an intent of, of being positive and being productive and moving things ahead in, in a you know efficient manner. And so um, that could obviously help out with the different versus being difficult. Because sometimes you'll just feel like wigging out just to wig out, and it's like, okay, yeah, I mean, you're. You're different. It, it's cool. You don't have to go like above and beyond to express that. Like I'm pretty sure most people know, you know, anybody with a high Aquarian energy, much like high Scorpio energy or a high um, Sagittarius energy, or um, yeah, you know, it, people are going to tend to know if they're in the known with astrology and whatnot. And so you don't have to like wave the freak flag and get all crazy and like going out of your way to really just kind of staple home that, hey, I'm different and you're going to like this, you know, or not so much even like going to like it, you're going to fucking deal with it, you know what I mean? Like, that's the Aquarian way, and we don't have to always uh, be so critical of that, but 
Moving into the last aspect as far as being the judgmental intellect, once again to rehash, um, we really don't know what everyone's going through. And so when you come to the realization that people don't roll out of bed saying, I can't wait to fuck today up. I can't wait to be the dumbest motherfucker around. It happens, but it happens by virtue of what I feel is just a number of scenarios, a number of external, internal, um, you know, things that challenge and, and push that against people. I'm not giving them an, a reason or excuse at all. But what I am saying is that they genuinely don't know any fucking better. And so to be so judgmental, is it really going to get us any kind of result? Is it going to make anything better or is it going to move anything forward? And that's a personal question that we have to ask ourselves when interacting with others. If perhaps we're getting a little too above ourselves. We're beginning to feel as though we know everything and that nobody can tell us shit because I've got this figured out and I don't need to. We can at least listen to things. Whether we agree or not has nothing to do with it. We just, hmm, okay, well that's, rather, that's you know, rather interesting. And plus a lot of people, you know, if they're really pushy, they're gonna push their ideals on you anyhow. And so they're not really concerned with how you feel about it. So why even waste our time? It's not worth our time. Um, it's one of those things where it's in the moment off the cuff you have to be like registering the feeling or the vibration that you're getting from someone once again tapping into your senses it's not your primary thing you're going to have to force yourself into sensing what that you know sensation feels like and there's a number of different things I may even do a video on that I don't know like how to tap into your senses because maybe some people have like issues with that uh, but yeah it's just one of those things where I know I I used to have a really, really, really hard time dealing with um, the general populace because I just didn't get why. Like, why could you do so much more in life? Why could you, you know, be so much better or, you know, do so much more than what you're doing? And it would just be like, you know, fucking idiots, you know? But then the more I grew and the more experiences I had over life, and plus coming from a perspective of efficiency, I had to go like, okay, how can I maneuver about these people? How can I interact with certain um, circles or people or things of that nature and not be so judgmental, not be like, you fucking shallow bitch. Yeah, I know I'm thinking it and you could totally tell, but I don't necessarily have to go out and project it. I could just be like, okay, in my head and just kind of like check out and do my own thing and whatever they make of that is what they make of it. But I don't have to actively tell you, you know, you know, you're a fucking idiot, you know, remember it's being mean, not mean, all right? So I'm not nice, I'm not mean, but I'm just, you know, obviously it's situation dictated. If, if someone needs to be called upon, then fine. But if not, we don't necessarily have to go out of our way to just be so judgmental and harsh and brash on people um, because it's not gonna do them any good and it's not gonna do us any good. It's not gonna do vibration good for anybody. And it's just, it feeds into what can be that tendency of Aquarians to be very, cold and detached at times because we have our view and that's our view and if you don't fucking like it then fuck off I don't really care <laughs> so if um, we fight against that then we have a better chance at perhaps getting a more um, opportunistic result um, to therefore carry on from there so nevertheless guys these are just observations and analysis as always zero need to call us there like, comment, follow.